as simple as it sounds, make content people want to watch. That yeah. is that is the main thing. Yes, we are doing this thing. BDE, you know, CVV. I'm man, excited. I'm pumped. Same. Oh, this is, and I don't, I, I don't know if people realize this, but you and I have been working together kind of behind the scenes mm -hmm. for quite a while. So it's good for us to be like officially collaborating now. Right. And like I had you on my channel like months ago for the uh, YouTubers draft what I get on the wheel or whatever. Um, but yeah, a lot of people don't know that, uh, I make your thumbnails behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Look, I was honored that you asked me to collaborate on your <laughs> channel. I'm like, what? <laughs> on your channel? So well, I'm honored to be here. <laughs> well, I'm happy to repay it. So, but yeah, you've been, you've been making my thumbnails for, man, how long has it been? Six months, maybe? Yes. Like six, seven months. That is insane. And the thumbnails you make, you are an artist. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I, and it's a lot of fun. I have to say, so before we get into the meat of all of this, I have to say when I put out six months ago, hey, I'd love to have someone help me make these thumbnails because I'm not that good at it. My thumbnails were like a two out of 10. <laughs> so I put out there on Twitter, like looking for someone who's passionate, loves wrestling, wants to make thumbnails. I had a bunch of people apply and a bunch of people reach out, maybe 300 in total. Mm -hmm. You were the only person who messaged me and said, hey, I made up some mock-ups of what your thumbnails would look like. Take mm -hmm. a look. Let me know what you think. If you like I them, feel, cool. Not I feel like people don't like, they, they, I don't know how to word it. They will ask for something or they'll be like, yeah, I'll make your thumbnails, but they won't show proof of how you can do it. Yeah. So that's, that was the mindset. I'm like, well, I really want the job for one. And then two, I was like, well, he's got to see what my thumbnails look like before he hires me. <laughs> well, I knew what your thumbnails look like. And they're like an 11 out of 10. They're incredible. They're one of the Thank reasons you. why your YouTube channel is you know, blowing up. Mm. But the fact that you went out of your way and took your time to go, here's what your thumbnails could look like. I went, mm -hmm. you're hired. Perfect. <laughs> like you work hard. I like it. Mm -hmm. We, and I feel like we, we work well together with the thumbnails too. Like I remember at first it was a little like a, like trial and error, like, um, kind of figure out what your style was, but I feel like we got it down now. Like, um, every time I send you one, usually there's not really a revisions anymore, unless there's like small little tweaks. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest, you know what you're doing. I have no <laughs> clue what I'm doing. Like when we first started working together and we first became friends six months ago, our channels were about the same size. I think I was at like 250-ish and you were at 230 or 240. I have a YouTube channel. You have like a rocket ship. Like <laughs> it's been amazing watching you grow. It's It's been so interesting seeing like the growth of my channel too. Cause like I knew exactly the reason, I like the exact reason on why my channel grew fast around like six months ago. It was just because I was being lazy. I was so lazy. I was like, at first, when I started my channel, I had so much passion. And then like, I was like, oh, I want my, you know, first plaque or whatever. And then I didn't, ha I didn't write any more goals. And then mm. once I started writing more goals and figuring out, I just don't like editing. And that was the main reason why I got lazy is because I hate editing. Yeah. So I hired an editor, videos started taking off. Okay, I just gotta pause this for a second to say the obvious. BDE is awesome, and you're awesome, and so is Tiege Hanley for sponsoring this video. So when I tell people that I'm turning 38 next month, May 19th, by the way, if you're looking to get me something, but when I tell people that, they're like, dude, what is the secret? It's really no secret, just make sure to take care of your skin. It's just such a crucial thing to have a good skincare routine. And I know there's a lot of guys watching this that don't wash their face, certainly don't moisturize, or you wash your face with the same stuff that you wash, you know, the rest of yourself with. Tiege Hanley is my go-to skincare routine because they just make it so easy. Everything you need is in this box right here. And check this out. They show you exactly what to use and how much of it to use. So inside the box, you get everything that you need, but this one right here, the AM moisturizer, this is the secret weapon. And it's the secret because of that right there, SPF 20. I used to live in Florida, now I live in California, and it's sunny like, I don't know, 361 days a year. So the fact that I'm putting on moisturizer that already has sunscreen built into it, that right there, 
That's the secret. Now I know what you're thinking. Skincare, that sounds expensive. Well, that's where you'd be wrong, my friend. Tiej Hanley cuts out the middleman so they can sell directly to you at a super affordable price. And since Tiege Hanley is sponsoring this video, click the link down below and they will hook you up with this right here, a free toiletry bag that you can get started for just 25 bucks. And trust me, I wish I had started much sooner than I did. Perhaps I would look as young as the Fresh Face BDE if I did. Look. You're speaking my language here, Brandon, like <laughs> writing down goals, like, man, that is right up my alley here. Yeah. So when you decided like, man, I've achieved all the goals that I wrote down before, what were some of the new goals that you wrote down? Some of the new goals that I wrote down were just stuff to look forward to. Um, yeah. Like they're, they're like not minor goals, but like stuff that is like six months ahead. So like at the time when I wrote new goals, um, it was just to get to 300,000 subscribers by a certain date. So yeah. I just work harder, make more videos, uh, be on a schedule, um, hire an editor, just like small stuff that would get me there. Um, and then some other goals are just like, you know, make this amount of money and like buy then or stuff like that. Stuff to just keep me going and get me motivated. I heard something great from another entrepreneur who basically said, when you're starting out, you're willing to take your time in order to save money. And as you get going, you're willing to spend the money in order to get back that time. And that sounds like exactly what you did here by maybe your editing skills are a seven or eight out of 10, but you don't love it. Mm -hmm. Hire someone who's great at it and pay them a little bit of money and take that off your plate completely. Right. Like um, something I learned from Mr. Beast actually was yeah. that he just doesn't do anything he doesn't like doing. So like if he didn't like editing, he hired an editor immediately. Or if he didn't like making his thumbnails, he hired a thumbnail artist immediately. Just like yeah. that way you're happier just making videos. Yeah. So is one of the goals hitting a million subscribers? Oh, definitely. That I'm trying, I'm I'm trying to go for it by next year, sometime next year. Well, look, anybody who's watching this right now, I will link it down below. Brandon does everything. Brandon's channel is infinitely better than my channel. So if you're subscribed <laughs> to mine, please subscribe to Brandon's as well. Look, I, I don't know about that. Your interviews are fire. <laughs> sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. But your channel is like, a, again, it's a, it's a rocket ship. So what have you done over the last six months? I mean, you've gained over 100,000 subscribers in just six months. As we sit here right now, you're at 360-ish thousand. You know, this video will be on YouTube for years and years and years. <laughs> but and this will be like a time capsule. People yeah. go, ah, he was... He was only at 360 mm -hmm. at that time. So what have you done over these last six months to really ramp things up? Um, one thing I started like looking at, I would like look at my analytics and see what videos did better. Um, so I was very in the mindset of like doing like my career stuff in the 2K games and uh, universe mode stuff in the 2K games. And I would make those like a episodic, you know, series. But over right. time, like anybody knows this, episode one does amazing. Episode sure. two, eh, and then three, it just starts dipping after that. Um, but then I noticed all of my like one-off type of videos, like can Akinator guess these wrestlers or guessing, you know, superstars like ages or whatever, like just one-off type of videos that last forever did better. Yeah. Um, so I just switched positions, basically. I just stopped making episodic, you know, shows basically and just did one-off things and i think i did way better in the long run i think we've gotten ahead of ourselves a bit here like let's let's kind of set the table for everybody you're 21 years old yes Three hundred and sixty thousand subscribers this is your full-time job you are a full-time youtuber first of all thank you thank you thank you congratulations thank you. man thank you. but let's back it up a bit here you started your channel in 2014 like I guess that's when you first started posting videos. Mm -hmm. When would you say you became uh, an official professional YouTuber? Oh, that that's a hard question, honestly. Cause, okay, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a, like a backstory. Please. So, um, in 2014, I started the channel. I would post like Minecraft, Call of Duty, just random stuff that like- And my you're 14 at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a 14, 15, depending on like what month it was. Sure. And, I would just upload content for my friends to watch. And um, eventually like it picked up like a little bit of an audience, very small. And then I was like, okay, wait, this is kind of fun. And I was in high school already and I was already taking acting classes. So it was just kind of fun for me to 
just do type of like improv kind of videos. So I think that's why I ended up falling in love with it. Um, but at the time, um, Minecraft and Call of Duty was not doing it. Um, I kind of fell out of both games because the Call of Duty game started getting bad. And then Minecraft, I just, you know, got tired of it after a while. Um, and then I was like, I don't know what to post. And then I was like, I love WWE. I was like, I don't know how to make content on it, but I love watching it. Yeah. So I just made like an injury report video about like Seth Rollins. It was around the time like he got his um, his knee hurt or whatever. Yep. Um, so I just like posted that. It did well for my channel at the time. I was like, okay, okay. I think I know where to go, you know, which direction to go in. Um, so 2K, WWE 2K17 comes out. It's a school day. It comes out. And... Uh, my mom had already left for work. My sister is out and I'm the only one home. And I made the decision to skip school that day to <laughs> live stream 2K17, like the day, the first day it com uh, came out. Cause I'm like, if I want to get in this community, the first day it comes out is very important. So yeah. um, I just stayed home from school um, and uh, streamed that. And then that video took off and I'm like, okay, I know where to go from here. Um, so I just kept making 2K17 content, my career uh, specifically. I would only upload my career content. Um, but I think the moment, to answer your question, when I felt like I became a YouTuber was when 2K, um, e, or they DM me on Twitter and uh, invited me out to like one of uh, one of the SummerSlam events or something like that. And that's when I was like, okay, okay, yeah, I think I'm a YouTuber now. <laughs> and you were like, wait a second, you guys are gonna fly me out here? You mm -hmm. guys are gonna pay for my trip to come yes. out? Like, I, I, I'm not gonna tell anybody, but I would have paid <laughs> for myself to come out there yes. and do this for free. Like, I think, um, so I got invited my first year that I started making 2K content. I had my channel for like three years already, but um, the first year that I made content, I got invited out and I only had like 48, 49,000 subscribers, like still super small channel. And then, um, you know, like you said, I was, I wanted to tell people, but I couldn't. So like, obviously I had to tell my mom cause I wasn't 18 yet. So she had to come <laughs> with me. Um, and then, uh, I told my dad and stuff like that and a couple of close friends, but, um, my mom was able to come with me. And that was really fun for her because, uh, you know, we grew me and my sister grew up with a single parent, you know, me and my mom and my sister um, and my mom had to pay for everything. If we did road trips, she paid for everything. Yeah. So when 2K flew us out, she paid for nothing and she absolutely <laughs> loved it. And I felt very proud. And that was in <laughs> Los Angeles, right? That was in New York, actually. That was um, it was this two uh, 2018. Oh, 2017. It was like right. the SummerSlam where it was like Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Brock, and I think Samoa Joe in the main event or something like that. Yeah. Um, around whatever year that was. <laughs> so you, I mean, I always talk about niching down on your niche. You found out your niche was WWE 2K games. Mm -hmm. And now you've basically doubled down on it, tripled down on it, 10X down on it. Yes. Like I, I, I want to try like other stuff and like, you know, post other games. But I think niching down is really the smartest way to go. If you, like, yeah. you want to see like long-term growth, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, that's exactly what you've done. I, I'm very curious. How do you continue to find new content? That's the hard part. That is, I think with the 2K games, they don't give us a lot to work with. Um, so it's kind of looking around on YouTube, seeing what other content creators are doing, see how they're uh diversifying you know their content with whatever game they're playing so sometimes um if i can't think of something i'll look around see what other creators are doing and kind of like not take from them but like look at what they're doing and apply it to myself or like to 2k yeah i mean tony robbins always says success leaves clues so mm -hmm. if other people are doing things and their numbers are growing like yeah, I could take that idea, put my own spin on it and do the BDE version of that. Right. Like there was a there's a YouTuber named uh, Lil Simsy. Uh, she just does, um, you know, Sims 4 content. Um, but she used a number generator to like make her builder or something like make her house. 
And I was like, oh, that's, that's actually really cool. What if I use the number generator to um, draft my roster in 2K? So like, there's like over 200 people. So if I ask Google to draft my roster, it gives me 30 and then I get Cesaro. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. What video have you made where you were surprised by how many views it got? Okay, no, 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 this is a recent one. Um, okay. So I made a video, um, it was like, I put Brandon Collins, that's like my creative wrestler. Um, I put Brandon Collins in today's WWE and this happened or whatever. Yeah. Um, my roommate, Aaron, actually um, came up with the idea or no, my friend or my roommate Dalton came up with the idea but Aaron is the one who did that idea before I did. So um, I gave everybody credit or whatever. And then that video exploded. And I didn't think that it was going to do as well as it did because I was like, okay, 500,000 people probably don't know who my created wrestler is. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know why that video popped. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then on the flip side of it, what video did you think, oh man, this video is going to be just a, a huge hit. You put so much time, so much effort into it. And it just kind of fell flat. Oh, okay. Now this, this, <laughs> that's a good question. So it was actually the video that you were in the, um, sorry, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was the video that you were in and it was like, uh, spin the, uh, famous YouTubers decide what goes on the wheel from what I buy on WWE shop. I thought that video was going to pop immediately yeah. <laughs> and it did well, like in the first couple of days and then it fell off, but now it spiked right back up. Like it has over 200,000 views now and it spiked out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from, but it happened in the last month. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like YouTube went, oh, Chris Van Vliet's in that video. Uh, we're not going to show it to too many people. <laughs> They're like, oh, but Xavier Woods now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever you have done, like the algorithm loves you. And it's amazing. I think it's like um, the algorithm knows what people like and yeah. I feel like one of my oldest problems was titling the video WWE 2K, blah, 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 and then naming after the episode instead of describing what the video is in the title. Yes. Like, you know? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I always tell people, these are not YouTube titles. These are headlines. Yeah. And like, I made the mistake early on by going like, Jeff Hardy interview, March 2012. It's like, mm -hmm. that doesn't tell me a damn thing about the interview. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, I just recently learned that only like a couple of months ago. Um, and I've seen the growth immediately. Like mm. it really makes a difference on how you title it. And everybody knows that. But like once you apply it and you see the changes, it's insane. Yeah, so there's the takeaway. These are not YouTube titles. Mm -hmm. These are headlines. And you yeah. got to make the headlines something that people want to like, that they're descriptive, descriptive enough that people want to click on them. Mm-hmm. You mentioned a few of your roommates, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but you live in a house with a whole bunch of other YouTubers. Yeah, I live in a YouTube house with um, Simply Better AM and Phoenix Nitro. We uh, have a group channel called Vibe. And we, at first, when we started that channel, we didn't do, we didn't want to do anything wrestling related because we know how like locked down the community is. Like if you do like for my channel, for example, if I uploaded Fortnite, it's not going to do well. Just yeah. and because that's not what my audience subscribed for. Um, so when we started the Vibe channel, it was like vlogs and random stuff and it did well. But then we were like, okay, let's just post 2K. And then <laughs> exploded. <laughs> so how many subscribers does it have right now? Uh, so the Vibe channel has 34,000 subscribers at the moment. Um, but when we stopped uploading on it, uh, for a couple of months, it only had like 15,000 or something. But then when we started uploading 2k, it got like 15,000 in like two months. Well, let's uh, throw that link in the description as well. <laughs> yes. I've got please. a secondary channel as well. And I'm with you. It's a little disheartening that the numbers weren't growing as much. I had a clips channel, CVV clips. Hey, I'll put the description down below. If you guys want <laughs> to check it out, man, <laughs> we got so many links in the description now, For real. but I was just posting like clips from my longer interviews and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh man, like these will do great. And they didn't, you know, it did okay. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, what's the point in continuing to post on here? I didn't for a few months, kind of like your story. Mm -hmm. And then I checked in on it and I went, oh, for some reason this got into the algorithm yeah. and now a bunch of people have subscribed. The algorithm is so weird. Cause like there, there are videos that will fall flat 
for like a year and then yep. out of nowhere a spike i don't know why it happens and like i'll talk to my manager about it and ask him like hey do you know why this happens he's like just youtube <laughs> you know what's so funny about this is youtube is basically deciding who's gonna be a millionaire and who's not gonna be a millionaire yep, <laughs> yep. Like we could click a button or two here and, you know, mm -hmm. BDE and CBV could be rich. I Man. Or they could make nothing. Button, please. <laughs> please, Girl. seriously. The fact that you have a manager is also something I think we should be applauding. Yeah, like that, that kind of came out of nowhere because when, so what happened was I was with um, like two other like networks before um, the one I'm with now. I'm with Studio 71 now. And I didn't like networks anymore because they would offer things that did not actually like, come to me. Like uh, I won't say like who I was with or whatever, uh, sure. but like they would promise things and I never see that delivery. So mm -hmm. I was kind of like sour on it for a little bit. And then like one day in my email, um, someone reached out from studio 71 and was just telling me like about their, you know, network and stuff i'm like i don't know and then they're like let's just have one call see how it goes i had the call and i'm like okay i kind of like what i'm hearing but i'm also sour on network so i don't know and then they connected me with who my manager is now he broke down everything and i was like okay i'll give it a go if this doesn't work this is my last time signing with the network blah 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 um and after i sign with them i have no reason to leave now they treat they, they treat their creators so well that I don't expect to leave anytime soon. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that because yeah. I think a lot of people have had the experiences that you've had mm -hmm. previously with a network where you get promised a lot of things and then nothing really happens. They yeah. just collect your views and collect mm -hmm. a percentage of your earnings. Yeah, and, I, and that ain't right. <laughs> no, you know, you had, a, you had an interesting crossroads in your life when you're starting to take off, things are going well with your YouTube channel. You're about to graduate from high school and you got to decide like, all right, am I going to continue down this path of being a professional YouTuber mm -hmm. or am I going to go to college? So what did that decision look like? Oh man, that, this is a story I've told many times too. Um, so I was in high school. Uh, I, I don't know how many subscribers I had when I graduated. I don't remember, but it was, I, oh wait, actually, no, it, I think I only had like 900 or like a thousand subscribers when I graduated. It was something like that. And I went to college but I did not like it. It was not for me. Um, one thing like me and my mom always talked about was no matter what, you have to graduate high school. Just get your diploma. Anything you do after that, we'll talk about it, but graduate. Um, so I graduated, no problem. And then I went to college and I was just not liking it at all. Like I didn't care for what I was going for. I just knew I either wanted to be an actor or I wanted to be a YouTuber. And I was like, in a, in a weird way, the most realistic option is YouTuber because <laughs> uh, it is hard to grow on YouTube. But um, I asked my mom, I was like, okay, let me just have one year off, no school. Let me just focus on YouTube. And if it doesn't work out in a year, then I'll go back to college. Yeah. No arguments, nothing. And she was like, okay. And we made the deal. Um, and three months into our deal, she told me I didn't have to go back because the channel <laughs> did well. Um, I made enough money to where I was helping with bills and like still had money for myself. So she was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're looking at it, both of those careers seem very unlikely from the outset mm -hmm. actor and YouTuber, like they're both, you know, million to one odds, yeah. unless you put in the work, <laughs> unless, yes. you know, you make the effort. And I think that so many people in both of those fields, heck, I live in Los Angeles where there's a lot of both. There's a lot mm -hmm. of actors and a lot of YouTubers. I should say there's a lot of aspiring actors sure. and a lot of aspiring YouTubers, mm -hmm. but you actually put in the work, which is why you're in the position that you're in now. It's hard. Like, um, I think when, when I first started, I knew I wanted to do it. I was very passionate about YouTube. I had been watching it for years before, like I actually like made my own channel. Yeah. Um, so every day I'd be in my room, wake up, I'd eat shower or whatever. And then I'd make like three or four videos a day and then, you know, get it edited, get it scheduled. And I would just keep going. My mom said she, she says it to this day. She barely saw me. And like when I started YouTube, cause I was working all the time and I still work a lot now, but it's definitely not as much as I used to. <laughs> so what's the schedule look like now? Um, so on like, there's no like set days that I record, but 
Um, like I recorded today, I'm going to take the day off tomorrow and i like, I'm gonna take the day off. I'm going to edit my video tomorrow. And Wait, what are you it. doing editing? I thought you had an editor. <laughs> See, okay. So I have an editor, but I tell him not to put the music on it because I like to do the music. Okay. Um, so I don't know why I just do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I just like to do the music and like, just put the final touches on it so that I have a say in the edit as well. Um, and then I get it up and stuff like that. So I take days off from recording so that I can let my voice rest. Um, and I'll think of a new idea that day. Um, if I have like thumbnails to do, uh, for you and me, <laughs> then I'll have some time. Um, and then I also take that time to like hang out with my friends and my girlfriend and stuff like that. Um, but back in the day I'd record every single day. <laughs> I can't wait to see the thumbnail you make for this video. Oh, it's going to be easy too. <laughs> it's going to be epic. I'm just going to take some thumbnail pictures after this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk about letting your voice rest. And I, I think that's actually a big thing that not a lot of YouTubers, not a lot of podcasters talk about. And I've had times because you're using a different voice when you're presenting, even if it's right. just amped up just a little bit, you're using a different voice, you're using different muscles. And I don't know about you, but there's been times when I do a bunch of YouTubing or interviews in a day, my throat just feels mm -hmm. tight. Just yeah. feels tight afterwards. It'll feel like sore or like you got to drink a lot of water or something. Cause like, uh, especially like with wrestling, um, like when, when it's about the game or a match, you get yeah. really excited and you get into it and then you start yelling and then <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it gets bad. <laughs> I feel like we should learn some like voice warm up exercises. Yes, please. <laughs> like, seriously. Well, I had a vo I had a voice coach on the podcast, the number one voice coach in the world, Roger Love, and he actually like taught me a bunch of things. I was like, oh, okay. I definitely do not do any of those things, and this makes perfect sense why my voice is destroyed sometimes after this. I need to learn some of those techniques. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> what? When did you come up with the name Brandon Does Everything? Great name, by the way. <laughs> that was okay. Fun fact too. I hate I hated the name at first, but I didn't have anything else to come up with. That was my Brandon Does Everything was my last resort. That was my last option. Um, my first YouTube name was E Trauma, and I hate I hate the name now. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> what I is E Trauma? Uh, so okay, on on PlayStation, my name was Emerald Effect. So I took the E from Emerald and just put Trauma. I don't know why I use like a, a a name generator or a YouTube name generator or something. <laughs> um, so I just put those together. I thought it was so clever at the time too, and I hated it. Um, but, I don't know. It's, it sounds like we're rolling into like an emergency room <laughs> and he has some real e-trauma here. You know? <laughs> so I was like, I want to change it, um, but I want my name to be in it. And yeah. I was like, I don't want like my actual name. Like there's nothing wrong with my last name, but I was like, I just, I want like a YouTube name. Um, and I couldn't think of anything else. And at the time I wanted to do wrestling content, but other do, do other stuff as well. So I was like, okay, whatever. Brandon does everything. And then I was like, that is a long name. But I was like, eh, what are the chances I'll actually grow? <laughs> <laughs> and then it took off and then I couldn't change it because then, yeah. <laughs> BDE is also really easy to say. Yeah. And I, at first, I hated being called BDE. I, I hated it so much. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but I get it because people didn't want to type out my long name. So I was like, I just got used to it after a while. And then like my friends started calling me that. So I was like, okay, if my friends are calling me that and I'm like, okay, I'm cool with it. And then I realized when I got my plaque, I tried typing Brandon does everything out on the plaque. Everything fit except the G at the end. So I had Brandon to put does something everything. else on the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon does everything. So I had to put a different name on my plaque. <laughs> so your shirt that you're wearing right now is your own, your own merch. Yeah, yeah, this is my own merch. Do everything. Do everything. <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of what we just talked about, about niching down. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, True. You, while you do everything, you just do the, you kind of just do the things that you do really, really well. Yeah. Like, um, so like for the merch, for example, the, the do everything kind of line of it is kind of do everything you can to be the best you can in a way. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So it, you're 21 now. As you look ahead to 25 to 30, what do you want to be doing? 
Um, that's a great question. Um, I, at the end of the day, I don't really want to stop making YouTube videos at any point. Like I know, don't. That, <laughs> like, I feel like there will be other opportunities in the future for sure. But even if the schedule comes down to, if I only uploaded once a week, I would still upload once a week. Yeah. Um, the, in like a couple of years, I'd love to be, you know, an actor on a TV show or a movie or something like that. That's always been my dream since I was a kid, but I'm very happy making YouTube videos and I don't plan on stopping. Are you still taking acting lessons? No, actually. Um, so when I was, before I moved to Ohio, um, I was in a couple of music videos um, for people. Like I would get roles through like backstage or whatever. Um, and I moved here and there was barely anything. Yeah. Like there is nothing to do here really. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna focus in on YouTube. Um, so I probably still need some acting lessons. <laughs> well, I have an agent in that area that I could connect okay. you with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cause I, I mean, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I lived in, you live in Dayton, Ohio. I was in Cincinnati, Ohio for nine months. Can't believe that we never made our paths cross. Right. I didn't know you lived that close to me until you were yeah. already gone. <laughs> Sammy Callahan lives in your city. Yeah. He lives very close. Honestly, very close to me. Um, well, I feel like he should stop by. <laughs> Cause when I was, uh, when I was in wrestling school, um, the, the person that was training us is friends with Sammy Callahan. He was like, yeah, he lives like right down the road. I didn't know how close he lived to me. <laughs> I feel like he should stop by the house and appear in some videos. You know, I'd be down. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure we could make that happen. <laughs> For real. What would you say are three big things that someone who's just starting out on YouTube absolutely needs to do? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Niche down for sure, because okay. the YouTube algorithm will love you if you just niche down because they'll know exactly where to put your content. Um, the second thing I would do is make a hundred videos. Just do it. Just if you think you're bad at it, just do it. Make a hundred videos because chances are you will be bad at it and <laughs> you will learn from it. Like you'll watch your first video and be like, okay, well, I know what to tweak and what to change. And then by your 101st video, it'll be a lot better than yours. Yes, love it. Um, and the third, I'd probably say, I know it sounds kind of corny, but be yourself. Because at first when I, when I started, I would try and like have, I wrote jokes out. I wish my notebook was over here because I still have it. I would like write jokes out, figure out where to put it in the video. And then it would just fall flat because like, when I'm trying to be funny, I am not funny. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm just being myself, I think that's where more people just started subscribing and connecting with me because I'm just doing me. <laughs> yeah, that's such good advice. I think like, I'm going to be paraphrasing this, but I heard something recently that was like, if you're inauthentic, people will smell that like from a mile mm -hmm. away. And if you're inauthentic, that is the quickest, easiest way to kill your brand. Right. But if you are authentic, people will immediately smell that out. That's the quickest way to grow your brand. Right. And I think that is really good advice because I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like when I'm just, when I watch my old videos and I see what I was trying to be, yeah. then I don't like it at all. I can smell it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, I feel like now it's just, when I make videos, it's literally just my personality turned up to a five. <laughs> a, f a five out of five or what? Five out of five. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, five out of five. How long did it take you to start to become accustomed to seeing yourself? Um, It was... Honestly, it was pretty quick just because since I was already taking acting lessons, I was already kind of comfortable being on camera. I was prepared to be on camera whenever. Um, but at first I didn't do face cams just because I didn't have the equipment. And yeah. then um, I just was like, okay, well, I didn't even announce a face reveal. I know like a lot of YouTubers do that a little face <laughs> reveal. I didn't care. I was like, okay. <laughs> Cause I think there's some people that go, ah, oh, do I really do that with my eyebrows when I talk? Cause my mouth mm. really only come up on one side. Like, yes. That yeah. is what you look like. <laughs> that is how the rest of the world sees yes. you. And now you need to get used to it. The, the, I think the number one thing that I always look at for my own videos is when I don't, when I really need a haircut, if I need a haircut, <laughs> I'm like, Oh no, people can see this. Especially during quarantine. Yes. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. I was the guy who got haircuts every two weeks. And then I went like four months at the start mm -hmm. of this thing. And I went, Jeez, that does not yeah. look good. I would try and get haircuts like every two to three weeks. There was a period I didn't get a haircut for like two or three months and it, it got, <laughs> I was like, oh boy. <laughs>
So what do you say to someone, Brandon, who says, man, I, I niched down, I've made a hundred videos and I still have only like 1400 subscribers. What do I need to do? Make, as simple as it sounds, make content people want to watch. That yeah. is that is the main thing. If you if you make content people want to watch and like you edit it well, they they will do well 100%. There's no reason it won't unless like the thumbnail is bad or the title is bad. Um and that's another thing too. People um need to take more time with how they title it like a video because if a couple of things are out, it, that is it's dramatic. It's a dramatic change really. Like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's very simple. No, I think you. I think you described it really well. I, I. I also think it's really important to like focus. Like thumbnail and titles are like the two most important things. They really right. are. Because once someone's clicked on your video, hopefully they're going to stay for it. Because mm -hmm. like the title and thumbnail matter the most. Because if they they got to click on it before they watch it. So like if the content is at least somewhat good, then the video should do somewhat well. I would say to people, you just got to start. Like, I think there's so many people that go, well, I would, I don't have the right microphone. I don't have the right camera. No, no, no. Just start. Like, like just hit record. <laughs> we all have one of these things in our pocket. Mm -hmm. the, the cameras are pretty good on these things. They're really good. <laughs> right. Just start. Yeah. And like your favorite YouTubers, you know, we all started at the same spot, right? We all started mm -hmm. with zero subscribers and zero views. And it's really important to keep that in mind. Right. Um, a lot of like the Brandon does everything channel wasn't even my first channel. I had like two other ones before that. Um, so I've, I've really been making content for a long time, but, um, the, the, I would have there, my girlfriend makes fun of me for it all the time. I had this call of duty video that I had. Um, I had no recording software. I put a bunch of boxes on my coffee table. <laughs> I put my phone or I put like a camcorder on something and I just recorded my TV and I just did commentary over the, over the Call of Duty game I had. So it's really like, even if you don't have the equipment, just get started so that you can get comfortable so that when you do have the equipment, then you can make the best content possible. So what does your setup look like right now? Um, so before I used to have like three monitors, uh, but I upgraded to getting just two bigger ones. Uh, okay. So I just have like two big curve monitors. I have like two um, LED lights that are shining on me. Uh, I got the green screen. Uh, I have a DSLR camera hooked up um, instead of like which, a- Which DSLR do you have? I, uh, the Lumix G7. Okay. Um, it's, we have the same mics. We are microphone twins here. You know? The SM7B. Everyone yep. has this mic. <laughs> For real. It's really the way to go. It's the best um, mic. And then I have like the Go XLR that my mic is hooked up to. So like I can like turn you down if I need to, but I could also have like Spotify playing loud if I needed to, like, you know, um, and then that's really the setup. I got the PS5 down there, weird flex. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to throw that in, you know. Yeah, you know, something like <laughs> what was the first big purchase that you made with some of your YouTube earnings? Oh, the my first computer. Um the or the first computer I bought myself. Um, so the first computer I had, my my dad and my stepmom got it for me for my birthday. And same with my Blue Yeti mic. They got me the whole YouTube setup. Um, and then I was still with the first network I was ever with. And they were terrible to me. They kept all of my money. They never paid me. Um, and then one day I was fed up. So I emailed them. I was like, technically, you have me by contract and I'm not 18. So you can let me out of this contract or we can take it to someone, you know, mm. kind of thing. They let me out immediately. I think like two days after I sent that email, they said, goodbye, you have been released. <laughs> um, so then YouTube AdSense, you know, went back to normal that I was able to control right. my money. And then the, I don't care to say the first check I had because it don't matter. Um, the first check I had was like $1,700. That was the first check I ever got from YouTube. Um, and I spent all of it on a new computer. I was like, if I want to be serious about it, I got to buy a new computer, new equipment and stuff like that. So yeah. And I think people will be surprised to learn that both you and I are PC users. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. I think that everyone just assumes, oh, you want to be a creator, you got to have a Mac. And this, I'm not hating on Macs. I have an Apple in my pocket, an Apple product, <laughs> iPhone in my pocket. <laughs> right. 
but I think that people are surprised to learn that we have PCs. Yeah, like I've I noticed a lot of YouTubers actually edit on Mac, um, which is unique because I've never been like into like Mac products like that, except like the phones. Um, and I just felt like you could do more with like Windows computers. Um, but I mean, whatever you edit with, you know. <laughs> I don't I don't think it matters. I actually have a laptop, so right. I don't even have a desktop. Oh, you don't? No. <laughs> I was on the road like in a normal time before COVID. I was on the road so much. Oh yeah, yeah. I was doing all my interviews in person. We would have totally done this one in person mm -hmm. if the world was a little bit more normal. So I wanted like this super computer that I could just take in a laptop case and take with me anywhere. Yeah, I had a sense. quick story here. I was editing, it was right after, um, it was right after Double or Nothing, AEW's first pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And I went and we shot the like, press conference, the, the media scrums they did afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I had this like older laptop and it was going to take like 52 minutes to export this video and oh, render it. No. And it was already like one o'clock in the morning in Las Vegas. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to set my alarm for like 151 mm -hmm. so that I can wake up when this thing is done rendering, then mm -hmm. upload it to YouTube, then start to export the other one, go to sleep for another 50 minutes, wake back up. And yep. I woke up the, the third time and went, I'm buying a new computer tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame me on that one. <laughs> and now I can export those same videos in like two minutes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's that's how it was for me. Like the computer that my dad and stepmom got me, it was great. You know, forever thankful for him. It got me started. But sure. that computer was terrible for rendering videos. Absolutely terrible. And that was one of the main reasons I had to get a new one. I was like, I uh, can't do it. <laughs> so your mom must be so proud of what you've built. Yeah, she... She was very proud once like she got to fly out with me for the 2K event because she had never been to a wrestling show either. And like when 2K, 2K gets a lot of crap for like their games, but they are really good with how they treat you um, like when they fly you out because they pay for everything um, before like, you know, the what we got going on in the world right now. Um, yeah. They... Oh, the first event I went to, it was a 2K SummerSlam party or something like that. So, like, there was a couple of wrestlers there doing interviews, and that's where I got to interview the New Day. Um, and the next day was NXT TakeOver. I don't remember which one. Uh, whatever one was in Brooklyn in uh, 2017. Um, so, they got us seats to TakeOver. It was actually the one Adam Cole debuted at. Um, and Bebe. Yeah. And my mom, oh, of course, of course you got to. <laughs> um, and then my mom absolutely loved it. She had never been to a wrestling show. She fell in love with Ember Moon and Asuka's match. She was in tears for it. She loved that match. <laughs> um, and then the, the next day was SummerSlam and she loved SummerSlam too. They put us in like the box uh, or whatever. Um, yeah. So, and she had never been in a box before. So that was really cool. Um, Man, look at you. You're showing your mom the world. <laughs> you know, that, that was really fun. That was a, that was a great moment for me. <laughs> and it also must feel pretty cool that, you know, you got your own car out of this. Mm -hmm. got, you're, are you renting the house you're in right now? Yeah, I'm renting the house I'm in um, and same with the car. I mean, I'm not renting the car, you know. I you're leasing the car. Right, yeah. But the fact that like you built all of this yeah. yourself. This it's is amazing. Crazy. Like I'm... Like I'm still so young. And like when people ask me, you know, where do you, where do you want to be at in five years? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Well, I mean, the answer might just be like doing the same thing, but like way bigger, like right. you're going to be at, I'm, I would imagine 2 million plus in five years. I, I freaking hope so. I'll be, I'll <laughs> probably hit 300,000 by then. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got 300,000 by the end of this year. No problem. I don't, no I honestly, and I hate to say this, I honestly don't know. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. But my channel's growing at like 2,000 subscribers a month. Yours is growing at 20, 30,000 a month. Something like that. Dude, that's amazing. And this is, this is the most growth I've seen from YouTube like ever. Like Ride this it, wave. Like every day I'm still like checking stuff and like, I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> Who were some of the YouTubers that really inspire you? Definitely Chris Danker, a hundred percent. Um, I'd say Dank Ops. Yeah, I'd say Dank Ops, um, Pulse, or some people may know him as CM Pulse. Um, just almost anyone um that was in the 2K community, because there's not a lot of us. Um, so just really everybody. Um, but the main people I would watch would be Dank and Pulse. I mean, you mentioned Mr. Beast before, and I think it's hard to be in this space without looking up to him and being mm -hmm. blown away by what he's built. 
Yeah, I I look up to him very like very much because the the way he handles himself with knowing what works, what doesn't, knowing when to switch things, and just like I said earlier about him not liking to do a certain thing, so he hired someone to do it so he would enjoy his job better. That's the kind of stuff that like I look at. <laughs> when you look back at your videos from even like six months ago, are you like? Could have definitely done this or that better. Yeah, like I heavily critique a video I would even do like a week ago. Um, Cause I'm like, oh, I could have added it in like a, a meme right there. That would have been perfect for it or stuff like that. Like I, I will always critique my own content. Cause like, I'm obviously in like competition with other 2K creators, but like, I don't see it that way. Cause they're all my friends in real life. So yeah. I just see it as we're all growing together, but I compete with myself all the time. <laughs> well, that's the that's a healthy competition, competing yeah. with yourself. And I also think that as a, as a presenter, I mean, as a broadcaster, whatever, if you're not looking back at your old stuff and going, ooh, yeah. that's, that kind of sucked a little bit. I, I think you're heading in the wrong direction then. Because mm -hmm. like, I feel like you have to critique yourself in order to get better in the first place. You absolutely do. It's tough mm -hmm. though. It's tough to be honest with yourself sometimes. Yeah. Cause that was, I think that was the thing for me. Like when I was talking about being lazy um, and like, I was lazy in 2019. I'll fully admit that. Um, <laughs> I was just, I just got tired of editing so much. And like um, the, the stuff I was posting did well for my size at the time, but not really at, at the same time as well. Um, so I was just lost. I was like, I, I didn't write any goals. So I wasn't really working towards anything. And I was like, I just don't know what to post. And then uh, since I hated editing, I wouldn't edit as much. Like before, I would edit a video for maybe 20, 20, 30 minutes done and just throw it up. And I would blame the algorithm for my video not doing well. And then at a certain point, I just had to look at my videos. And I'm go, I'm like, it's not the algorithm. It's me. <laughs> it's, it's just me. Um, yeah. So once I was like, okay, I spent like four hours editing one video, popped immediately blew up. I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. Let me stop being lazy. <laughs> mm. All of this is self-taught, right? Like you taught yourself how to edit, you taught yourself how to use the cameras and everything. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything I learned to be a YouTuber came from YouTube. Isn't yeah. that brilliant? I, yes. Like everything I searched up, uh, how to get a better camera, how to hook up Elgato, everything came from YouTube. <laughs> I mean, we live in a time now where you can learn literally anything right. from YouTube. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um the other day i just bought like a heat press and stuff like that so i can make my own merch from home because um teespring i'll say this because everybody everybody knows how i feel about teespring i love <laughs> teespring because it's so easy for people yeah. to get your merch and they put it right under your videos yep. but the quality has dwindled down because like i've noticed i'll throw stuff in the wash and then like the paint from it like scratches and i'm like what what is going on it didn't used to be like this um i still love teespring but um <laughs> I decided just to buy my own stuff so I can make my own merch from home. Wow, um, yeah, that's I amazing. Learned, I learned the whole process from YouTube. <laughs> You're screen printing your own shirts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use, um, I use like a heat press. Um, I have like a printer that will, you know, do the same thing kind of thing. Um, so yeah. Man, you really do do everything. <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> this is, wow. How much has your cat helped in this process? My cat? <laughs> <laughs> she she has helped bring some stress levels down. <laughs> that is what my cat has done. Olive, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see Olive popping up on your social media all the time. I'm like, ah, Olive's probably pretty helpful. Yeah, we, we adopted her about a month ago. Um, she is absolutely insane. She is <laughs> so crazy, but she is so sweet. <laughs> when you talk about this idea of writing down goals, that's a foreign concept to a lot of people. So where did you get inspired to start doing that? Um, when I was younger, my mom would, um, well, we had a school project actually. And my mom helped me out with it. She was like, we had to make a vision board. And um, I just put things that I wanted on it. And I think that really is what got me into the mindset of, okay, if you want this, write it down. You see it every day and stuff like that. And I ended up joining like this program called like the Black Rhinos program. And um, it was just for um, single parents that had a black kid um, to go hang out with other black kids and get a father figure in their life. Uh, I love my dad. Me and my dad are cool, but uh, he wasn't like, you know, with me and my family. 
So I would hang out with these other, um, you know, mentors. And um, one of the assignments was do a vision board. And this was mm. completely separate than the other one. This was like a school project and this was there. And they taught me like how to tie a tie, how to fix a tire and like just stuff you need to know. Um, and they were like, it's very important to write down goals because all of them are successful. Um, all the mentors in the group are like, you know, uh, rocket scientists and this, that, and that, like they, they know what they're doing. Sure. Um, and they all talk about like writing goals and stuff like this. Um, so that's really where I started getting the idea from. So do you still have a vision board to this day? Um, I don't have a vision board, but I, have, um, I, I still write my goals on a piece of paper. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I do that every single day too. I completely, yeah. completely agree with that. I think it's such an important thing to do. Is this every, it's every day that you do that? Um, I'll look at it almost every day. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't write anything if I can't think of anything. Um, but uh, my girlfriend will kind of help me like write a new goal if like we were talking about something. She's like, oh, you should write that goal. Um, so yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I text you this frequently, but like I'm so excited for you to hit a million subscribers. Yeah. And I think, um, I think like with that kind of support too, like you can't do it by yourself, you know? Like I think like one of the main reasons why the video on my channel that you were in did so well is because everybody else was in it. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta have a support system too. Well, I mean, look at the reaction we got when I tweeted out this morning that we were gonna collaborate together. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah. it's finally yeah. happening. They were like, oh, we've been waiting on this. <laughs> Dude, I, and I, I'm just excited that like, this is the first time we've actually spoken words yeah. to each other. <laughs> we were just texting up till this point. Mm -hmm. But and you've like, been, you've been like such an instrumental part of my channel growing. So I want to thank you for that. Mm -hmm. No problem. It's been fun. <laughs> oh, it, it has been fun. And I, I just, you know, I, I now aspire to do what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's crazy because like some people, I won't say like names just in case they don't want to be in the video, but like I've had like bigger channels tell me that they look up to me recently. And it's weird. Cause I'm like, that's yeah, that's weird. <laughs> like it's supposed to be the other way around. Well, it's hard not to look up to what you're doing. Like when, especially when you look at your growth and you look at your numbers, it's, it's great, man. Thank you. Very curious. What is the, what is your favorite wrestling game of all time? Oh, oh boy. Um, I'm, it's not a popular option, but I'm going to say <laughs> SmackDown versus Raw 2010. It's not a bad game, but that was the game I spent the most time on as a kid. Okay. Like me, me and all my friends played it. We put, oh, there goes Olive. Yeah, there was cameo there from Olive. <laughs> cameo, there you go. Um, but yeah, I spent a lot of time on the game. Me and my friends would play all the time. It's mainly for the memories that I have instead of how the game actually was kind of thing. I think I'm very excited that you said SmackDown versus Raw because mine was SmackDown versus Raw 06. Oh, really? oh, I love 06. Because I spent, that was the game. I, I don't play a ton of video games now, but that was the game that like, we would have tournaments around that game right. and like spent far too much time playing that thing. The older games are so much, so much fun. Who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Um, so, okay. When I was growing up, <laughs> Randy Orton, because I got into wrestling like, or I'm still young, but I got into it when I was like eight. So I got into it around like, when Randy Orton was popping in WWE, like okay, he had yeah. the WWE title and everything. Um, so he just kind of like had an impression on me. Um, so Randy was my favorite growing up, but I think of all time, I'd probably say Daniel Bryan. Okay. All right. What's your yeah. favorite match of all time? <laughs> that one's harder to think about. Um, <laughs> it's hard to narrow it down to just one. Yeah. I think off, off rip, maybe maybe Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunn and like oh, 2016, that. that match was a banger. Um, either that or anything Johnny Gargano take over, <sighs> anything. <laughs> Probably with Andrade though. So that, that match was so stiff and, oh yeah. And Johnny has been my friend. I've known Johnny for like 10 years. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I was a ring announcer for a couple of different wrestling federations when I was working in Cleveland. Mm. So I was Johnny's ring announcer way before he ever even like before any company was thinking about signing him that's awesome i did not know that <laughs> he's a good dude so yeah. i'm very glad that like you you throw him into that mix because you're yeah. right that guy All gives 110 percent to every match yes like he i don't know there's 
there's just something about how he wrestles. It's so good. Yeah, he wrestles with his heart. Like he true. literally is. He's all heart. That's very true. What What was the decision for you to move from Georgia to Ohio? Uh, to start the YouTube house. Um, we oh, all, wow. Of yeah. all the places, you moved to Dayton, Ohio to start a YouTube yeah. house? Um, so Aaron was already living here and he had a job at the post office that he wanted to keep. And I was already ready to move out. Um, I talked to my mom about it. She was fine. Uh, obviously she was a little upset, but she was like, do you? Um, so, and, uh, Dalt lived like an hour from me in Georgia, but we moved to Dayton because me and Dalt kind of wanted to get out of Georgia as well. Cause we had lived there for so long. So I was like, okay, well, I've never lived in Dayton. If I'm moving out, I kind of want to start, you know, fresh, you know, move somewhere where my friends don't live and move somewhere where family don't live because I'm just like, got to grow up. <laughs> um, so yeah. That we all, terrifies a lot of people, by the way. Yeah. Like it was, it was definitely scary, but I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll be all right. Um, but yeah, we all moved here to start the house. Uh, the first house we were in was pretty small. Um, and then we have the bigger one now. What do your neighbors think of you guys? Oh boy. Uh, the first <laughs> house we were wild in. <laughs> we would do like 24 seven stuff outside. Like we filmed a video where I got hit by a car uh, and then Aaron won the 24 seven title uh, because I got hit by a car. Um, and like Aaron honked his horn really loud. So they, they probably looked at us pretty weird. I filmed some weird TikToks outside of my old uh, house. <laughs> um, so th this house though, we've been, we've been a lot better. There's HOAs and everything. So we can't be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that so many people, myself included, move out at 18, 19 to go to college. And that's their experience of kind of leaving the nest, if you will. Right. Or is this, I'm moving to a new state, a new city, because I'm going to be a pro YouTuber. I <laughs> you know, it. and like moving in with them too has been like a college experience, honestly. Because sure, we had, of course. Because <laughs> we're like we're all around the same age. Um, Aaron's a little bit older than me and Dalt, but we're still like all around the same age. Um, and we'd have a bunch of fun uh, before, like you know, the COVID era. Um, you know, we'd have people come over to the house all the time. Uh, hang out and stuff like that. So it was, I got my college experience. <laughs> well, you're surrounded by like-minded people as well. Like mm -hmm. if just one of you was a YouTuber, it might be hard to like have, like take night that passion every single day right. to like get up and make the videos. Mm -hmm. The fact that all of you guys are doing it and you're all kind of working in collaboration and also, you know, some friendly competition with each, with each other, that's gotta help. Yeah, because when, when we're all, like when, when one person celebrates, we all celebrate. Like last night when I told them um, that I was going to be doing the interview with you, they they knew for a long time that like I've always wanted to be on the, uh, you know, on your show. So they they were excited. Anytime someone hits a milestone, we celebrate. So it's it's a lot of fun. Dude, I'm, I'm so excited for what's next. But as your friend, I'm just super proud of everything thus far. Thank you. And you know that I end every interview talking about gratitude because it's such an important thing, I think, in all of our lives to appreciate that. So I want to ask you, Brandon, what are, what are three things you're grateful for in your life right now? Um, th three things that I'm grateful for. Um, definitely my job, <laughs> um, my girlfriend and my family and my friends. Um, even, that's all one thing. Okay. And, <laughs> and the last thing. I'm still alive <laughs> with everything that's going on in the world. I'm grateful. I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. You've got your health, man. Yeah. It's important. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much for the, I I've learned so much. And I know that anybody that's watching this that either has a YouTube channel or is thinking about starting a YouTube channel has probably written pages upon pages of all these notes that, I mean, you've just bestowed so much wisdom upon us here. So thank you. Thank you. If anybody has a question about YouTube, DMs are always open. <laughs> oh, there it is. I, I, I always like to reach out. Like if I see like someone DM me the other day and um, asked for some YouTube advice about like making 2K content. And I usually like read a lot of my DMs. I re even if, if I don't respond, I probably have read it. Um, I've read it. I read all my YouTube comments. But this one kid DM me. And he was just really excited about getting into the, the 2K community. And I looked at his channel and I saw that he was like actually trying mm. like and like putting up interesting content. So I just DM'd him back with a long, long paragraph of just, this is what you should do and you should see growth. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Like Have I've you ever thought about making a video like that? Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever thought about making a video like that? If you want to grow your channel, here's what you got to do. I've, I've thought about it. I like, I don't know how well it would do against like mm. other content, but I, I have thought about it. Well, whatever you're doing, don't stop doing it. Thank you. Because <laughs> whatever you're doing, it's, it's working for your channel. And man, I look forward to doing this again with you. Yes, sir. You can have me whenever. <laughs> <laughs> BDE. Thanks That's so much, me. man. Thank you.